I have created a summary of the 29 exact reasons for why I'm buying Palantir stock. There's not gonna be any fluff or time wasting in this video, we're just gonna go right into it and talk about why I love this stock at this price. First off being that Palantir is growing like crazy. In the latest quarter, Q3, that just came out, we saw $392 million in revenue, which was an actually increase of 36% year over year, which actually beat guidance of 34%. Palantir usually has an amazing Q3, so going up against crazy numbers from last year is a really big feat for us. Total customer growth grew by 20% quarter over quarter, okay? That's just within three months. That's not year over year. And then whenever we talk about the commercial side, it actually grew at a 46% rate quarter over quarter. We actually saw 103% growth in our American commercial side, which obviously has a huge total addressable market. Some of this growth is actually coming from one of our newer products, which is Foundry for Builders, right? This is our newer product that allows for small to medium-sized businesses to actually get the Palantir product, but they're not rolling it out to just anyone. They're slowly rolling it out themselves to certain actual customers that they fit the bill. Now, they're actually growing this at a really, really insane rate, and it really increases our total addressable market overall. Now, all this customer growth is great, but we actually want to see the amount of money that we're supposed to be making off all these new customers, for which we see in remaining performance obligation actually grew 172% year over year to $874 million. That helped grow total deal value to $3.6 billion, which was actually up 50% year over year. See, the typical big customer for Palantir is actually spending around $41 million a year on their products and services. That's up 35% year over year, and that trend is getting better and better every single quarter. So not only are we getting the customer growth, but we're also making them spend more and more every single quarter. And so that's sort of, you know, that compounding growth that we wanna see for our big business. And Palantir's adjusted gross margin is still at 82% this quarter, which means that for all the money that we're bringing in, we get to keep a massive margin of that, which really makes us seem like a big SaaS business. And those gross margins really start to show whenever you see things like $2.4 billion in cash, but yet only $250 million in debt. And the market cap for this company still has so much room to grow, considering that it's only a $45 billion market cap today. And Palantir estimates that their total addressable market is $119 billion, about $56 billion for the commercial side and $63 billion for the actual government side. And that's not including Foundry for Builders and some of their other commercial side products that we're gonna talk about in this video. And what really makes me excited about a stock is whenever founders and owners of the business actually have a huge stake in the actual company's success, which means they're gonna work very, very hard whenever they go into work to make sure that their money is growing. And in Palantir's sake, we actually have a 12.78% actual share that is held by insiders in the stock of this company. That is massive compared to the other competitors. And Kathy Wood from ARK Invest has said that, you know, Palantir has technology that she thinks is about five years advanced from anyone else in the entire business. And she thinks that the average investor that's investing in other data analytics firms have no idea the extent at which Palantir has an actual advantage in this business. And that proves true whenever you see Palantir closing eight hundred plus million dollar contracts with the U.S. Army, which is almost double the size of this quarter alone. The decision for the U.S. Army to award Palantir this actual contract just shows you how they see the company and what could be what, you know, eventually happens to the Air Force, the Navy, Space Force, or anyone else as we continue to grow our government side. And now with what's happening in the world today, it is increasingly more important for governments like U.S., U.K., Australia, all these different places that use Palantir technologies to potentially even increase their spending because of the threats that are happening in China. And with a $550 billion infrastructure bill that passed last week, it's important to know that there's gonna be a ton of increased climate spending that Palantir might be the forefront of because there's gonna be a ton of data analytics that are gonna support what they're doing. And it all just goes to show that Palantir now has cemented itself as something that's not a want for the government side, but an actual essential business. And they have also come out and showed us their newest product, which is actually Foundry for Crypto, which just shows you how fast they're able to expand in other really really quickly upcoming markets as well. Which on a side note is just how open they are to you know these new concepts and new ideas of businesses like crypto and we might even see hopefully some actual crypto on their balance sheets if they get very very bullish in the space. Apollo is another very interesting product for Palantir for which not a lot of investors actually look into as being a benefit to the company. But even Palantir executives are actually saying that they underestimated the total addressable market and the use cases for Apollo and they're actually calling it their secret advantage because there's really no other 
competitors in the space. And the company is actually doing great with a lot of their cash investments, actually starting to put it in very early stage SPAC investments. They're creating these very lucrative long-term relationships with these companies and even selling them their own products like Foundry for Builders, which in tune could lead to a whole bunch of subscription revenue for them, but also they may even land you know, a multi-billion dollar huge SPAC deal if one of these companies is actually a breakout success. And this brings me to my next point, which is that one of the co-founders is actually Peter Thiel, which is well known that he is by far one of the best investors in the entire world, and having him on the board of directors and actually having some insight into some of these investments is a massive plus for the business at no cost. And another point that I love is that Palantir actually has a huge cult following, leading to massive news coverage, whether it's actual financial statements or just Alex Karp doing some of his trail runs. And this is actually very important to the business because this will keep, you know, uh, not only Alex Karp, but Palantir in general on their toes and making sure that whatever they do is gonna be seen by the public eye. So they need to make sure that they're stepping correctly. In the short term, we actually saw Outlook get increased for these guidance coming up to Q4. Now they went from $300 million in adjusted free cash flow up to 400, an increase of 33%, you know, what, what is going to be quarter over quarter. In terms of long-term outlook, we're actually seeing that they're still holding up that 30% growth rates for the next four to five years, which a lot of analysts actually had problems with. And they said that they won't be able to hold up, but yet they're still continuing to hold out that outlook and not adjusting it at all. And finally, to my last point, it's just the fact that we are in such a demanding market right now that just wants to see absolute 100% beats on revenues and earnings, and they don't actually care about the small-term growths in the stocks. Which this could be great news for investors like me, considering that the quarter that just came out, I actually thought it was a great quarter. Like, I had no problems with it at all. And then yet, you know, people are still selling it off, like, almost down 10% at this point. So I think if people want to oversell the stock, I'm just going to be buying the dip. Anyways, guys, that's all for my list. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you could, like the video down below and subscribe if you want to see more financial content just like this. Anyways, Appreciate you guys watching, stay safe trading, and I'll see you guys on the next one.